Hey guys, I hope everybody's having a fantastic day. Whether you're watching this in the morning, in the afternoon, or in the evening, I'm glad you guys are here. Today we're going to take talk about slicing knives and what makes a slicey knife, in my opinion. And my opinion is very, uh, what will we say, maybe subjective, maybe based on varying levels of knowledge mixed with higher degrees of ignorance, right? Um, so we all know heat treat's important. I'm going to focus a little bit more on what I feel is telling, and that's blade geometry. Um, and just look at some knives with some different blade geometries that cut well and why I think that is in my very uh, non-scientific pontificative style of wondering if I'm on to something or not. You guys tell me in the comments. First thing I want to do is say thank you, thank you, thank you to all the channel members. Thank you guys. I appreciate each and every one of you. I want to say be up, everyone. I want to thank Joe Isabella for that token of uh, love and remembrance. And uh, I want to invite any of you who come into the channel, who come out of the channel, but you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, really help me out if you take just a second and hit that subscribe button and that bell notification icon. I'll try to quit mentioning that. My analytics just show that 80% of the video consumed, people aren't subscribed to the channel, and I just feel like I haven't done anything to pull you guys in yet, and I want to pull you into kind of the circle of my little knife journey world here. But let's start out with blade geometry and why I think the knives in my collection that are super slicey that I reach for when I'm wanting a slicey blade like this TRM Atom do such a good job. Uh, this knife's in 20 CV and it has a very thin blade stock which is going to be kind of the uh, we'll call it the um, the thesis or the uh, hypothesis of this uh, video. I think thin blade stock, I think either a deep hollow or a tall flat like this tall flat on this TRM Atom are essential to getting you a very, very slicey uh, platform. Then your heat treat, your blade steel, things like that are going to come in. But I think the platform has to start with the blade geometry. For example, this is 0 0.0910 inches stock thickness. And at the top of our bevel, not at our apex, but where that bevel starts, what's that, 22 thousandths, 0 0.0220. So just a little EDC urban laser knife is all I can say. This is a full-size representation of a very, very slicing knife. We have a couple of others. Um, and we do have different types of knives that I think all fit that same geometry is kind of king, get the heat treat right, use quality materials, but geometry cuts, right? Um, TRM Atom is a great example of that. Um, if we want to look on a more budget line, another knife that recently I've been playing with and reviewing, this Leong Ma uh, Eutectic uh, budget line, the EFD which I think stands for more economical field duty um, folder. But guys, this knife has some of the best geometry, the best ergonomics. 14C28N. Again, you've got that tall, almost full, flat grind. You're talking about a blade that's giving you an inch and a quarter in height and a thinness at its thickest point of 0.12165 behind the edge top of that bevel 0 0.20 with that 20 thousandths I can't read a uh, calipers but yeah very thin slicey $88 slicing machine so if you're looking for a knife that has fantastic geometry that's a full-size knife that slicing things is your main goal that's got the geometry set up for some serious slicing 
um, and blade steel that'll keep it slicing with the 14C. And then the other thing that I think is a huge advantage of a knife that's set up with slicey blade geometry is the maintenance and bringing that edge back to screaming sharp, in my experience, is always kind of a, a joy to do. And it's not as laborious as if you're trying to take a blade with a worse geometry and turning it into something that cuts better, right? So start off with something with a good blade geometry if slicing is your main uh, goal. And then, um, you know, maintain that edge with your strop, with your uh, ceramic rods, and with your sharpening system. So this is the Liang Ma Eutectic $85 EFD. Great blade geometry. Great slicer. And we'll move on, and we will kind of jump, jump the shark, and we'll look at a great slicey little fixed blade. This is my Baltic Blades, one of two of my Gen 2s. I like this knife so much. Um, I picked up a Neo Scale version. These are under $100, guys, right over 100 ship in N690. Um, made by a young gentleman, Paulius, over in Lithuania. He does them in his garage. But this knife has a shorter blade. Still got thin blade stock. It's going to be a little thicker than what we were just looking at. Maybe. Eh, 1255. So about the same blade stock. Let's see what behind the edge is. Boom. I'm not trying to get apex. This has got a really, really shallow grind. 0.0175, really it's closer probably to that 0.090 because this is an absolute paper divider. Again, the blade geometry, and when we got that out, break out another fixed blade with what has fantastic blade geometry. Again, you've got that tall, flat ground, crew wear blade. Um, that is designed, yes, it's got a very pokey tip, but guys, that's geometry. Listen to the cleanness. Just pull the paper across the blade. That is all blade geometry and a perfectly executed apex. T. Denny designs, T. Denny knives. This is the Apprentice Gen 2. Super slicey, as is my Baltic Blades Angus Gen 2. So it doesn't have to be blade geometry on a modern folder. It can be blade geometry on the knife that you want to be a slicey knife. But, you know, you can take a knife that's not designed to be a slicey, and you can have a lot of work done to it with three grinds and stuff like that, and it'll be better, but it'll still have thick blade stock. So, in my opinion, if you know you're going in to the need of the knife that I'm looking for today, or the need of the knife that I'm wanting to be uh, a slicey knife, why not start with one designed for that, uh, that task, right? Get a knife designed to be your little slicey, whether it's your fixed blade, whether it's your modern folder, we looked at a couple, whether it's a slip joint. So for example, talking about blade geometry, I happen to have this Max Ace Beetle S. And the Beetle S is unique in a couple of different ways. It's a modern slip joint, got some really nice appointments on it, but it also has an absolutely screaming thin blade with a tall flat grind that gives it amazing blade geometry. Guys, 0.0590 at the thickest point. Behind the edge, 0.0025. So yeah, um, this knife is a slip joint. It's got kind of a ratcheting action where you've got a distinct stop half stop you've got that three-quarter 
you've got some stops along the way, right? But it's very safe, very intuitive, not going to close on your hand. And I mean, another one that you can just use and it separates paper before it even touches it. Super, super slicey. The sliciest slip joint I've ever come across. And again, it owes all of that to that beautiful blade geometry. Super thin, super well done, M390. Um, fantastic, fantastic slip joint. The Max Ace, Beetle S. And then you've got knives like the Lush by Devo and traditional pocket knives. This knife, because the hollow ground is done so well, it's one that's probably one of the sliciest knives in my entire jam. I have not stropped this knife. I have not put this knife on a stone. It came from Concept, who I think was the OEM. Just an absolute detailed slicer. Beautiful blade. Beautiful, beautiful, low, deep, hollow ground. Really hugs in those cuts. And is it just downright paper shredder. So blade geometry, guys. That's the method and the message of this video. Now, I'm just cutting paper. There are a lot of other things we cut. But I think all good cuts or all cuts that you are determining to cut a certain material might not be right for these knives. If you're cutting wood, are you going to want the slicing knife that we're using here to slice paper to think about cutting tomatoes with or what else we might cut this thin? No, there are other knives for that. But when we're talking about slicey, dicey type of knives, um, I just wanted to point out some from my collection that are super, super slicey. Um, and the Lush is one of those knives. Um, the Spyderco Watu, this knife is sickeningly thin. It has got blade stock coming in. Look at there. 0.0970, not front, blade stocks 0.0460, behind the edge is 0.0250, and guys, this little Watu, angled down, so the blade's going to be very close to what you're cutting, so for utility cuts, for detail cuts, this knife is an absolute... I'm trying not to cut into my mat, but it'll separate paper. And then when you go to actually cut paper, the grind on this blade is perfect. This is a Tai Chung Taiwan Spider Co. The Watu is. It is in 20 CV. And the blade geometry, guys, it's got that tall, flat, leafy blade with a very small. 17 degree edge bevel on it come all the way out to the tip just an absolute banger again it's the blade geometry when you look at the thinness and the height of the blade and the way that that all comes together to put together a paper shredder slicing machine then I picked up the uh, Mr. Mr. Designs um Cipher because it looked very reminiscent of one of my favorites, which is the TRM Atom. However, it's different in that it's a Tonto and it's OEM by Best Tech and it came from a different place. 0 0.0860 and we're looking at 0 0.0180 behind the edge with a tall, nice American Tonto blade that just has perfect slicing geometry. Guys, if you were cutting through steak, or if you were carving a roast, I mean, this knife, cutting tomatoes, um, cutting paper, cutting cardboard, I don't care what it is. If you're saving your Slurpee, that front edge is keen, 
that edge is keen, and that blade geometry is just elegant, tall, and flat. Again, the heat treat, I'm sure, is adequate. Um, for what I'm cutting, the blade geometry is the actual... Uh, to me, it's the variable that determines which knives slice the best and which knives don't. Now, after I run this through a thousand feet of cardboard, if I were to do such, then I could take all these and I could say, okay, this one's heat treats better than that one, this material's better than that one, and we could play that game. But let's look at a couple of others. Let's look at my Mag-10 Knife Works, Mag-10 USA, and let's look at our quiet carry waypoint this is the thin little knife guys that i don't carry enough but when i was doing this video i thought i had to bring it out it's blade stocks 0.0850 a little scanty ground type of blade where material is taken off on this hollow here so this should be a screamer um, i don't know why i've not carried or cut with this knife it's not even the same case as my other quiet carries Guys, take a good look at that blade, and that is what perfect blade geometry, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, looks like on a hollow grind. You're starting with thin stock, you're moving metal as you get down to the apex to come up with this beautiful grind. You've got this Invanex steel, which is basically a rust-proof uh, tool here with titanium and Vanex and G10. I could drop this in the ocean, pick it up in a year, and I'd have to just scrape the barnacles off of it. On the other side, we've got this beautiful Colin McGuire handmade fixed blade Warncliffe with some of the most elegant blade geometry I've seen this year, you've got this nice three-quarter flat, beautiful swedge, nice, nice hollow, worn cliff, super thin stock. If we go from where we're starting, behind these jimps, what do we got there? 0.995, or right around 0.1. So that translates into a great fixed blade that I probably wouldn't want to go jab into stumps, but it would definitely be effective against any soft tissue that I might need to jab into. And I have a feeling it would be a cardboard shredding machine. It would be a paper shredder. It has got a point that could be called into work for cutting out labels, cutting out detail cuts, cutting out carpet, you name it. Um, it is a thin ABL slicing machine. One of the most gorgeous knives I own and one that I was proud to be able to bring out into this video because it's grind fit the uh, narrative of what I was going out here, which, guys, was to talk about what makes a slicey knife a slicey knife, and a lot of things contribute to that, and I think most people here will agree that blade geometry, in, in my opinion, um, is going to play the, the, highest, the highest role in how well that knife slices. Sure, it's got to be sharp. Um, it does. It's got to be sharpened well. It's got to have a good edge. But again, if you're starting with proper blade stock, a proper uh, geometry, it's easy to get that edge to perform where it's supposed to, right? Because you've got a good baseline to work with. But every one of these knives, which I just shared at random, I was going through my collection thinking, all right, I want to slice some paper tonight and show off some what I think are good examples of knives made with a slicey geometry in mind, i.e. their purpose when they were designed were to be scalpel-like or little slicey beasts, right? 
in one way or another, in one form or another, whether you're going for a fixed blade, whether you're going for a uh, more traditional slip joint. This one of the sliciest knives I have. I just wanted to feature these guys for you. I hope you found it informative. I hope you guys found it somewhat entertaining. And I hope you guys will look out for the guy or gal to your left. I hope you'll look out for the guy or gal to your right. I hope you'll look out for each other. Go forward with love in your heart. And please, choose to bait, not hate. Be up. Thank you, Joe Isabella. I love you all. Peace.